Hi, welcome to the Academic Success Center's online calculator tutorial for the TAB 1112 test. My name is Nick. I'm a student here at EFSC, and I'm super excited to be presenting this calculator tutorial for you today. To access the scientific calculator used on the TAB 1112, please use the following link. That link is going to bring you to this page. On this page, you're just going to scroll down and you're going to click on the button called here and you're gonna click here as well and then once you get to this page you're gonna open up the mathematics tab you'll notice that there's four levels for the test you'll need to know how to do all the questions in all four levels today we're just gonna look at level D but make sure that you cover all those levels for your test prep because you will need to know them for the test on this page you're just gonna fill in the username and password provided. You're going to sign in. And then you're going to click continue, select mathematics level D. And then there'll be lots of directions for you to read. When you're testing and practicing for your test, you, you'll definitely want to read those directions. But right now we're just pulling up the calculator. So that's what we're working with right now. All right, so now that we have the calculator pulled up, I'm going to pull up some practice problems and then we're going to look at how to use this calculator. Alright, so I got those practice problems pulled up and we're going to start looking how to use this calculator. Before we start, I just want to mention that um, over here we have our calculator. And as you'll see, there's sine, cosine, tangent, there's uh, x squared, which is our squared function, there's our logarithms, our natural logs, our parentheses, our pi. Well, there's not everything we need is not here right so if you don't find something that you need here it's probably on the second tab so you go to second and then it's here so we have pi is still there but we have 1 over x we have our square root button we have our um, 10 to the x so if you don't find something on the first tab make sure you check the second tab For our first practice problem, let's look at how to calculate numbers with decimals. So let's just start because this is uh, best shown. So here we have 15 point, make sure you get the decimal point right here. Two, four, six, minus six point eight two plus 0.05 and then you click enter and you get 8.476 which matches with the correct answer which means we got the right answer so let's move on to fractions 3 out of my 4 wrong button plus there we go 1.625 which is correct now you may have noticed that I put parentheses around the three-fourths while they didn't over here and if you're wondering why I always put parentheses around my fractions on this calculator because it just helps me to always remember to do it so I don't have to worry about when do I need it when do I not need it because I always use it and it always comes out correct so you may want to do that or you may want to you know, not use it like they did. I mean, you can get the same answer by just doing what they did, 3 fourths plus 7 divided by 8. It's the same answer. So if that's up to you, I like to always put parentheses around. So you'll see me doing that throughout this video. Let's do the next one. 2 divided by 5, parentheses, divided by. Now on the next one, in case you're wondering, you actually would need this parenthesis, which is why I always just use them because I don't want to have to remember when I have to. I just always do, so I always get the right answer. 0 0.9, that's correct. So you, you could do the first one without it, but I don't, I don't like chancing that of forgetting it when I need it, when I don't, so I always just do it. All right, on the next one, we're going to do mixed numbers. For mixed numbers, you do need parentheses, so that would not be the time to try to not use a parenthesis. All right, so 10 plus 9 divided by 25. 
parenthesis divided by, make sure you get the opening parenthesis, five plus three divided by five. And then we get 1.85, which is our correct answer. That's how we do mixed numbers and fractions. Next, we're gonna look at order of operations. So order of operations, this calculator will do it for us uh, to an extent. So if we have something like this over here, 21 divided by three times two minus six, we don't have to worry about parentheses or anything. We can just plug that in and our calculator will do that for us. And we get the correct answer of eight. So this calculator does order of operations for you when you're doing stuff like this. When you need to worry about parentheses is like mixed numbers and fractions and stuff like that. But this calculator will do order of operations for you. All right, and four percents. On this calculator, you can do percents as uh, just 68 divided by 100, and then you'll get your decimal of 68, which is equal to you know 68%. So we would do that. That's what they mean by to calculate percentages. Enter the percent number and then divide by 100. So you just put 68 divided by 100. That's what 68% is equal to. All right. So then we would take 68 divided by 100. Oops and we would multiply that by 375 and we would get our oh, correct answer of 255, which is correct. And then for powers and roots, we're gonna look at that and how to do that on the calculator, which is actually kind of fun. Um, so we have 17 squared is the first thing we're gonna look at. And we actually have a squared button on our calculator. It squares numbers for us. It's right there. It's x to the squared. You just press enter and you get 289, which is the correct answer. 17 squared. And then for exponents higher than 2, we use a caret. So we would do 3 caret 5, which you would read 3 to the power of 5. We would enter that and we would get 243, which is the correct answer again. All right. And then we would, for roots, we would just look at, uh, look for our square root button, which isn't here. So if you remember what I said about a button not being here, we have to check our second. Oh, and there it is. All right, so we have square root of 961 is 31, which is correct. So remember, if you can't find something, make sure you check the second tab. All right, and then we have indexes higher than two, which is the square root. So for that, we use, just like we had the square and then the caret, we have the square root and we have the indexes higher than two. So for that, we're going to put our index first and then our radicand, which is 4096, there we go, and we get eight which is the correct answer again. So that's how we do powers and roots. All right, for our final thing we're gonna look at together is calculating with scientific notation. Scientific notation is uh, when you have an integer or a decimal that is multiplied by 10 to the power of something. And scientific notation is always done with parentheses on this calculator. So I'll just show you how this works on this calculator, okay? So we have opening parentheses, 3.6, and then I always put a multiplication here because I don't, it's just a force of habit for me. I always put that there. Uh, and then I would do 10 to the 14. If you look at the calculator, they don't put a times there in between their 10 to, to the power of, but I, I always do. It's just a force of habit um, for my calculators that I've had throughout my, all my schooling. And then I do that. I would put the division in there. Again, opening parenthesis, 2.4 times 10 to the 3. And then I go back to the first tab. 
and I put my closing parenthesis and another closing parenthesis. If you're wondering why there's two closing parentheses for these, that's because this opening parenthesis needs one, and then this other one also needs one. So you have to match your parentheses. So that's why you need two at the end. All right, and then you just press enter, and you get 1.5e to the positive 11. But over here it says 1.5 times 10 to the 11. Let's look at that and why the calculator says that real quick. All right. So the calculator said 1.5e to the positive 11, but our practice sheet said 1.5 times 10 to the 11. Well, that's really easy to explain. On the scientific calculator, the e means 10 times the whatever power it has. So it's 10 to the power of whatever number it is, to this, in this case 11. So it would be 1.5 times 10 to the 11. So that's why that looked a little different. It's the exact same thing. It just looked a little different. It's 1.5 times 10 to the 11 written as 1.5 e to the 11. So we did get the correct answer there. So I hope this helped you with the calculator practice for the TABE 1112 test. Uh, and I hope we covered everything. Uh, so thank you for watching the video. And uh, good luck on your test.